Eternal Health, episode number three. Listening to the Eternal Health Podcast, where we discuss God's great design for your life in body, mind, and spirit. Your host is Laura Rimmer, who's a plant based nutritionist, author, speaker, and health coach. Looking for yoga tips or the latest protein shake recommendations? Sorry, you're in the wrong place. If you're ready for no-nonsense, multi-layered health expertise, drawing on evidence-based nutrition and biblical principles, welcome to Eternal Health. For show notes and to download your free 5-Minute Optimum Health Scorecard, please visit laurarimmer.com. Enjoy the show. Okay, so I am pretty excited today. I've got a great interview lined up for you with Dr. John McDougall. Now, I've been following John's work for many years, probably over a decade. He is a true pioneer in the area of uh, nutrition-based medicine and using great nutrition to prevent and reverse disease. So here's a bit of background on Dr. John McDougall. He's a medical doctor. He's founder of the McDougall Program. He's been studying, writing, and speaking about the effects of nutrition on disease since 1968. He's been practicing medicine for almost half a century, so almost 50 years. And he believes that people should look and feel great and enjoy optimum health for a lifetime. Dr. McDougall has developed a nourishing low-fat starch-based diet that not only promotes a broad range of dramatic and lasting health benefits, such as weight loss, but most importantly can also reverse serious illness, such as heart disease, type 2 diabetes, arthritis, without drugs. So he helps people stop taking unnecessary medicines and avoid wherever possible things like tests, surgeries, treatments, and in other words, to get out of the medical system. He's published lots of books. I believe it's 13 books. He's probably most famous for The Starch Solution, The McDougal Program, The Dr. McDougal's Digestive Tune-Up. And yeah, he's a a real true legend in the area of natural health. So I'm excited to bring you Dr. John McDougall. Okay, so welcome Dr. John McDougall to Eternal Health, our podcast. Yeah, just want to say before we start, thanks so much for for joining us on this show. I've been following your work for a number of years, John, and um, I remember, so it'd probably be about five years ago now, my mum and dad and I sat down and watched your your series, your DVD series, Fighting the Big Fat Lies with the Fad-Free Truth. And it was, it's been really helpful. My mum and dad were struggling to adopt, um, you know, a healthier lifestyle. And watching that series really, really helped us all. So, yeah, just want to thank you for that and, and welcome you to the podcast today. Well, thank you. Uh, it's always nice to help your parents. Yeah, it is, isn't it? When uh, my parents were alive and Mary's parents were alive, the wives were in pretty good shape. The moms were. My mom actually just died about three months ago at 93. Oh, Okay. Uh, you know, I mean, there's a time for everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, uh, her Mary's mom lived to 99. Wow. But the, the dads weren't in such good shape. Uh, Mary's uh, father had prostate cancer since age 70. Mm-hmm. He died in 93, essentially free of prostate cancer. I mean, he it was in his prostate, but it never troubled him. He had a massive heart attack at about 70, my age. And... Uh, you know, it, it motivated him to change somewhat. And then he had another massive heart attack. And that, you know, that did it. My dad, about the same thing. He was, uh, he was, I believe, about 70. And uh, he had uh, a, a lot of heart trouble. And he changed his diet, lived another 11 years. So, you know, the, the people who gave us so much in life, our parents. Yeah, yeah. To be able to give back to them uh, in a simple way like you did. With your parents a very simple truth that costs nothing is obvious and easy to understand you have to you have to have a real serious blind spot to miss this yeah so, sure. uh, I, I i appreciate you starting out telling me about how you found out about including your mother and father yeah no you're welcome thank you okay all right then so um so you're a medical doctor john and you've been practicing for many years so just 
can you tell our listener just your background so how you got into medicine how long you've been practicing and what is your approach why are you different to a lot of doctors okay uh, i'm a board certified internist that means i've got all the credentials every one of your other doctors has i'm a physician medical doctor i also have some associations with three medical schools i take care of their students you know give them a little teaching I believe I'm licensed to practice medicine in four states in the United States. Uh, I published uh, seven scientific papers, uh, some of our work, and uh, I've been doing this for almost a half a century. And next year, next year, it'll be a half a century I've been in medicine. Hmm. Uh, For 40 years, I've been able to practice the way I want to practice, which is essentially take care of people who are interested in what I'm interested in, which is getting uh, healthy. And that means getting off medication and avoiding heart surgery and you know all kinds of unnecessary surgeries. But let me let me qualify for those of you who are about to think they're talking to a somebody who has a panacea. Uh, this is a panacea in the sense that when you're talking about people of Western diets like those in New Zealand and Australia and now China, mm-hmm. now India, the United States, Canada, and so on. Uh, it's about, you're dealing with about 80% of the problems of, uh, of this population. These are wealthy people who suffer from diseases of kings and queens. Uh, but there are lots of things that uh, medicine uh, treats well with its conventional approach. These are generally classified as acute problems, like infections or broken bones or laceration. You get an auto accident, you want... You know, you want the surgeries, you want the blood transfusions. You, you know, so there are a lot of very, very good things about medicine. So, as they say, don't throw the baby out with the wash water. Sure. But the problems in the countries I mentioned, and now pretty much over half the world, the problem is, is that people are eating like kings and queens. They're living like the royalty, the pharaohs, uh, uh, the priests and priestess of the past, the wealthy mm-hmm. people eating the food of kings and queens. And, uh, you know, we're talking about, we're talking about oh, oh, well over half the world is a king and a queen. And what do you expect? You know, they're fat, they got gout in their feet, they're, they're suffering from the diseases of royalty. So those diseases, you can cover up some of the, uh, some of the signs and some of the symptoms, but you don't change the progress of the disease. You don't help the person get their health back. They're just a, a fat, sick diabetic that has possibly better looking numbers because they're taking a bag full of pills. You know, you just have a, a fat, sick person walk around carrying bags full of pills. That's medicine. Mm-hmm. I don't have fun practicing that way. So what, I, what I've done for the last 40 years, uh, let's see, boy, oh boy, I'm mean, 16, uh, almost 32 years in a residential setting mm-hmm. where I've locked them up. And, uh, you know, one, one, one setting is a hospital, St. Helena Hospital, which actually I'm going to visit this afternoon. Mm-hmm. Second best heart hospital in California at one time. I practiced there for 16 years, and now I do it at a, uh, a resort that we run, a clinic we run at a resort. And I've been doing that for about 16 years, too. So I've been at this a long time. I'm a real doctor. I've touched 10,000 patients, you know, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, gotten to know them, gotten in their life. I've basically lived with 6,000, had them in residential programs. Uh, as I say, we publish our scientific work. If you want to read about uh, our patients, you can read se- several papers, uh, three in particular. One, we published on 1,615 people through our program, and that showed phenomenal weight loss and blood pressure and cholesterol, et cetera, diabetes. Of nearly ninety percent, ninety percent, nearly ninety percent of people got to reduce or stop their medications. So there's that paper. Then there's a paper done independently by Oregon Health and Science University the Medical School in Portland, which shows one year phenomenal results. And then there was a study called the Broad Study from New Zealand. Yeah. Which uh, yeah, it looked at uh, our diet in a community setting, randomized trial. And again, phenomenal results. You, you, you'd, you would um, 
you know, you you look at the numbers, you say, wow, a drug company would become a, a trillion dollar a year company if it had a drug that would do that. Hmm. Yeah, they would, <laughs> but unfortunately it takes rice and potatoes and not drugs. Yeah, so that brings me to my next question then, because in one of, um, one of your videos I watched, you say, you know, I must be the luck- luckiest doctor on the planet because my patients get better, which is what you've just just talked about. So, what are you doing? What the smile? <laughs> <laughs> well, I talk about the smile. What I do is people are sick because they the diet of kings and queens. Mm-hmm. Well, what did the people who work for the kings and queens eat? You know, if they happen to be in Asia, they ate ninety percent of their diet is rice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they happen to be in. Uh, in your Central American countries where the Aztecs and Mayans lived, uh, well, I think everybody. I don't even know if the royalty ate rich food then. But the common person, the, these were the people of the corn. And if you went further south, say to South America, to the Andes, to the Incas, to Peru, what's now Peru, uh, you'd find people living on potatoes. Mm-hmm. So what the common person lived on was starch. That's always been the human diet. I mean, it, uh, I've given various figures as to how many people have lived on planet Earth, and I'm sure I'm a few hundred billion off. But somebody told me a hundred billion people have lived on planet Earth. Hmm. I used to say 10 billion. But anyway, the point is, is that of those billions of people, very, very few up until the last 50 to 100 years have been on the diet of kings and queens. 99.99% of the people have been on a diet of starch. Rice, corn, potatoes, etc. So what I do is I put them on a starch-based diet. We have, um, oh, I, I would guess probably three, four thousand recipes published. Uh, there's an app that you can get for four dollars and ninety-nine cents that has a thousand recipes. We have thirteen national best-selling books, and mm-hmm. somebody wants to write another one, and I don't want to, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and so we have thirteen national best-selling books and. And uh, Mary invented, Mary's my partner for 40, almost 46, Kelly, it's 46 years now. Believe that, this is September, we met 46 years ago. Oh, wow. she, uh, she, she was the, is the inventor, not was, she, she is the inventor of low-fat vegan cooking. Uh, prior to Mary, say prior to 1978, there was low-fat, mm. yes sir. And that was you skinned your chicken, and you consumed skim milk. Or that was low fat. Mm-hmm. So, uh, since Mary's invention, which is a, a low fat vegan cooking, you know there was also vegan cooking back then. There was low fat skin chicken, skim milk, yeah. and then there was vegan, which was uh, some broccoli swimming in a few cups of oil. Okay. Yeah. Uh, both of those kinds of diets are toxic. What's so good then? Because you, you, your most famous books, I guess, in my mind, are your, the Starch Solution, yes. And the other book which I really like is um, the Healthiest Diet on the Planet. And I love the subtitle of that book because it says that you can um, eat the foods that we love, like pizza, potatoes, pasta, and they are actually the solution to prevention of disease. So how come? How come these starch-based foods? How are we reversing disease with this stuff? Well, the body always wants to be healthy. Say you believed that the air quality in China, which is, I hear, just like uh, you're smoking two packs of cigarettes all day long. Hmm. Uh, say that you thought that was normal air quality. Yeah. Was uh, two packs of cigarettes floating in your environment all day long. Uh, the way you would cure yourself of your chronic lung disease is you would live in an environment that was pure air. And you'd say, how did I cure myself? I cured myself with clean air. No, you cured yourself by removing the poisons, okay. the dirty air. So how does the body cure itself uh, by dietary change? Well, if you believe the Western diet is normal, healthy nutrition, you know, cheeseburgers and pepperoni pizzas, that's good for you, which interests taught you, then you can't figure out how to cure yourself because you think that's normal eating. But if you believe the diet of people as it's been for the last, well, I can document two and a half million years, but I can certainly document over 100,000 years, the diet of human beings has been starch with very, very few animal 
products at all, with exceptions. So if you believe that that's the normal diet, is a diet of cheese and eggs and fish and beef, then there's no way you can cure yourself. But if you believe the normal diet is what uh, basically everybody's eaten throughout all of human history, is a starch-based diet with almost no animal products, then when you stop the diet of kings and queens, your body cures itself, just like it would if you stop the polluted air or if your beverages were 50% alcohol all day long. You thought that was normal, and you kept falling down, and you stopped that beverage and went to pure water. You'd say, miracle, what cured me? No, water didn't cure you. It cured you with stopping the poison. Stopping the poison. Yeah. Stop, stop, stop the poison. The body naturally heals. And so people are suffering from dietary-caused poisons. Poisons, dietary-caused disease due to poisons, which are in two categories, as you know, because you've got the diet, the healthiest diet on the planet. Two categories of food poison are animal foods. That means toads, eyes, frogs, tails, uh, chicken's feet, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> legs. You know, animal foods are poisons. Just just say it. Just, just look at it that way, even though you didn't die the last time you ate a steak. I know that. It, it takes decades to kill you from eating steaks. Uh, animal foods are poisons. Uh, one category of poison. The other category of poison is vegetable oil. Mm -hmm. And that means corn oil, safflower oil, flaxseed oil, your healthiest health food, purified, whatever oil. You know, oils are toxic. Uh, so you don't eat oils. And you eat... Instead, you eat starch. You eat potatoes, rice, corn, beans, pasta. That's what people have always eaten until they became fat and sick. Okay. And do you know what? I know this firsthand. I've been vegan, low-fat vegan for seven or so years now. And I know that the day I gave up eating animal products, my health got better. I've been able to run marathons, ultra marathons. I've lost weight. My skin's better. So I know firsthand. But... I meet so many people, and you must obviously do too, people who say, well, well, what's wrong with animal products? So what's wrong with eggs? Aren't they health foods? Isn't milk good for you? Isn't meat, even like lean chicken? What, what's wrong with that? Surely they're good foods for you. Well, the number one thing that's wrong with them is that they weren't designed as food. They're not the food for people. Uh, there's, there's a match here that goes on between, between the species of animals and their diet. You know, they're different. Like, I just fed my cat out there. Uh, I didn't feed my cat baked potatoes. Sure. <laughs> you know why I didn't feed my cat baked potatoes? But he did really enjoy a nice steak, a nice piece of meat, just a little bit. He would really enjoy it because that's his diet. The primary reason that meat is not, uh, you can, well, I categorize it as poison because that's really the correct term in call it whatever you want, unhealthy or however politically correct you want. But the reason it's wrong is it's not your food. It's my cat's food. Uh, milk? Milk? Excuse me? Are, are you talking about whale milk or dog milk or camel milk? Uh, or uh, do kangaroos make milk? I think they do. But anyway, what kind of milk are we talking about? Cow's milk is great for cows. If, you want, if you're growing some little cows in your house and you want fat little cows running around your house that are constipated, well, anyway, uh, it's the wrong food for people. Okay. And, you know, we could go on with eggs. Eggs are, you know, well, they have another purpose. And, yeah, we can, we can live off these things. The human body is a survivor. It lives off two packs of cigarettes a day, a half a bottle of whiskey a day. Mm -hmm. And uh, hot dogs uh, wrapped in bacon. <laughs> it, it survives. So uh, it's just the wrong food. You know, there's, there's a right food for, you know, if you're a pet, if you raise pets, say you're, you raise horses and you race them and you win money, you're going to make sure your horse gets the right food, right? Sure. There's a the right dog. And same thing with the dog breeder. I mean, it's, there's a diet that's best for that dog. Anyway, you get it. People are starch eaters. You're starch divorced, starch vegetarians, starch eaters. Until you understand that you will have problems with your health and your family's health, uh, you'll never be the athlete you could be. You'll never win the triathlon or the marathons. 
as triathlon marathon runners win today eating corn yeah and rice starch the winners eat starch absolutely yeah so sort of grandkids by the way my grandkids who uh uh i get them mixed up because they're so similar so talented but one of them two years ago won the state champions for his team did for soccer and last year the other one won state champions for soccer and and they know they they know all three of these boys who live real close to us they know that they're the fastest kids in school this summer and they know why but they of course won't tell their friends why they know why they're the fastest kids in the school okay so to recap then so the experience you've had and yeah your approach um, with the mcdougall program is low fat vegan so plant-based diet is best for well, health. well let, let's use me let's make sure we all have the term right okay because you're dancing around i know you're not doing it on purpose but you're dancing around what i'm saying the diet is a starch based diet okay so what's the so difference just call it, well plant-based could be a diet of nuts okay it could be a yeah. diet of kale it could be a diet of broccoli yeah plant Base doesn't mean anything in terms of good health, except you're not eating animals. It doesn't mean you're eating a healthy diet. You can't live on a diet of broccoli and kale. Many people are out there trying to be mm -hmm. nutritious, and they're starving to death. So, yeah, there's a lot of difference, and absolutely, you and I, at least for this one short time we have together, we're going to use the right word. It's called starch. Okay. And it was a from the vocabulary of people in the Western world in 1977. The reason the world was eliminated is because industry got involved in the dietary goals for the United States. Mm -hmm. And all official documents from that point on eliminated the word starch, which is what grandma used to call dinner. Mm -hmm. And instead, they called it complex carbohydrate. Okay. So, so now you're told to eat complex carbohydrate, you go, hey, where's that complex carbohydrate? I haven't seen one of those in a while. But if you say starch, you say, oh, you mean like potatoes and rice and corn. And they also eliminated the words meat and milk and cheese and dairy from their guidelines. Instead, they call it saturated fat and cholesterol. You don't know what saturated fat and cholesterol are. They're animal foods, eggs, fish, well, fish saturated but it's cholesterol yeah you know, if they called it what it is if they said in the goals and guidelines they said things like and if you eat chicken beef pigs etc no they say saturated fat mm -hmm. okay well i'm not gonna eat any saturated fat see so once you get control of the of the nomenclature yeah words you got the public so we're going to use the right word when you recommend to patients, Dr. John McDougall, that they a starch, starch, starch-based diet. Now, what were you going to say? Okay, so yeah, that it highlights, doesn't it, the politicization of, of food and the terms, and which is interesting. Um, so, okay, on that subject, then starch versus plant-based, which is kind of a buzzword these days. Plant-based. The first vegan I ever met was plant-based vegan. He didn't, he would, he would he really seriously would not hit a fly with a fly swatter. He was one of my interns when I was a resident back in the 1970s. Yeah. He was fat and greasy and he was pure vegan. He lived on Coca-Cola and potato chips. Yeah. Okay. Now, excuse me, a plant-based diet could be Coca-Cola and potato chips. Sure. So why starch then? Why, why a higher carbohydrate diet and a starch-based diet? What's so good about that for our health? Ask God. Ask God. I didn't. I didn't do it. Well, whoever you, whatever you believe in, ask it why it designed human beings to live off starch and lions to live off dead animals. Ask God. Yeah. Don't ask me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good answer. Yeah. Um, and yeah. For me, I, I mean, I'm a Christian, so I see in the Bible that this makes oh, sense. Yeah. We're told, you know, the plant, the plant bearing, seed bearing fruits and, and grains and things and potatoes. So, yeah, I'm with you on that. OK. Yeah, I didn't I didn't design the McDougall diet. Daniel wrote about it in the Bible 2006 
years yes. ago, and actually, actually, he he cheated and stole my ten day program. That, that, <laughs> Because I ran a 10-day program 2,600 years ago. He ran <laughs> and reported in the first chapter of Daniel. I wonder if I can get any lawsuits going, plagiarism, or idiot, or something. Oh, that's funny. You know, you just, I wrote, you, hopefully you follow my newsletters, I wrote the July 2017 newsletter. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, it's about uh, eliminating confusion, straightening out confusion, because people are always... I mean, always. Like, I'll, I'll get to my emails when we're done. There'll be two or three emails saying, Dr. McDougal, there's a new diet by Dr. Gundry that is uh, lectin-free. In other words, no beans and grains. Yeah. Why don't you recommend that diet? Or uh, the next letter will say, well, you know, there's a new low-carb diet. It's called the grain brain. If you eat grains, then your brain dies. Mm. And that's that's why we never had World War II, and Japan was never a threat to us because they lived on grains and they all had dead brains. What do you mean? Uh, you know. So I, I got, I just got so tired of telling people why I believe what I believe. I've now written thirteen national best-selling books. Read. I've done two hundred professional videos. Watch. It's, and it's all free on my website, drmcdougall.com. So you know. Uh, July 2017, I wrote a newsletter that said, this is why I believe what I believe. I gave you my four major experiences in life that settled my mind 40 years ago. And people are always asking me, Dr. McDougall, why don't you get updated? Why don't you change your mind? Well, Daniel in the Bible, why don't you get updated? You know, why don't you change your mind? Because the truth is the truth is the truth is the truth. It doesn't have to be changed. Mm -hmm. Uh, It shouldn't be changed. Well, anyways, the July 2017 newsletter settles it. Now, anybody who writes me or asks me about the low fat, eat all the dead animals you stuff in your mouth diet, or don't eat beans and grains because they have something you've never heard of called lectins. And mm. oh my God, I'll tell you, it's a, you just can't keep up with it. And we live in a free country with free speech, free trade, and the freedom to kill your wife and your children. And you and your parents, we have that freedom in the United States of America. We're free. So industry can do whatever they want. Mm-hmm. Don't get so it's too early in the morning to get me excited now. <laughs> now, you mentioned another thing which is really um, toxic, and that's vegetable oils. So what, what's the issue with vegetable oils? What is vegetable oil? I mean, I'm thinking about it. I've never seen it grow in nature. Hmm. I don't know. Where do you get vegetable oil from? I've never seen any vegetable oil ever, ever any place. Oh, you must process vegetables. Oh, that means you take the oil out and you leave everything else behind, all the vitamins, minerals, proteins, etc. You just have isolated oil. Isolated oil you use to see uh, lubricate your car. Uh, you use oils for uh, lubricating squeaky doors. Uh, what, do, what were the oils for? They're, they're certainly not food, because mm-hmm. I've never seen one grow. They're isolated toxic ingredients that are uh, have pharmacologic properties. In addition, it's not, not like they're neutral. They have pharmacologic properties that cause changes which cause industry to promote, promote them, like, for example, fish-type oils, sulfaxy-type oils. Are omega threes and they'll thin your blood, which may reduce your risk of having a heart attack. May, uh, but it also thins your blood. So if you get in an auto accident, you're more likely to bleed to death. And these uh, oils are also are pharmacologic drugs. They're drugs. That's what they are. They're not food. They're drugs at best. Uh, these drugs will uh, decrease arthritis. You've heard of using oil to decrease the pain of arthritis and. Uh, uh, they they do it by suppressing the immune system, not by oiling the joints. Okay. By suppressing the immune system. Well, you suppress all the immune system, so cancer grows faster. You're more likely to get infections. So it's it's a drug. It's not food. It's a drug. Hmm. Interesting. That's- so on the on the topics of drugs, um, what's wrong with the medical industry, in your opinion? Uh, 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 nothing except for the fact that it's uh, uh, basically unregulated. 
Uh, even in New Zealand and the U.S., you can advertise directly to consumers. And boy, do they sell us everything. Most other countries, uh, the governments regulate the uh, industry so they can't get directly to the consumer. The drug industry is just a business. It's just doing business like any – when I say good, I mean good at the at, at morally the worst. Yeah. Any business would do – any business's goal is to make the owners and stockholders happy. So they want to sell products. And they do it uh, at any extreme they can get away with. If it wasn't for the few regulations we have over drug companies in the U.S., uh, there would be a lot more toxic drugs still on the market and more, even more on the market. Uh, they pretty much can sell you anything. For example, diabetic medication. And my January 2017 newsletter reviews these new medications. The diabetic med medications of the past, and I mean, really up until now, still, still the most common ones used, uh, they increase the risk of dying and heart disease and hypoglycemia. It absolutely proved beyond a doubt that these drugs uh, either don't benefit or worsen the risk of heart disease. So they have new drugs coming out that show slight changes in your uh, risk of dying of heart disease. Very minor. But, uh, you know, you uh, end up having leg amputations and all kinds of other really serious adverse effects. All kinds of things. And uh, so maybe at best, and you read my January 2017 newsletter, maybe at best these new drugs, at best, cause a 3% reduction in risk of dying of heart disease, along with many, many added complications. Hmm. Uh, the, net, the, net, the net outtake is they do the, as much harm as good as the old ones. They're, they're all horrible. But they can sell those to the public with the idea that they're helping diabetes. All you have to do in the United States to get a drug licensed for diabetes is to show it lowers blood sugar and doesn't kill people immediately. You, that's all you, you don't have to show it re improves health, causes weight loss, uh, you know, heals their diabetes. It just has to lower the sugar number. That's, that's the only criterion that is necessary to market. And so that's why we have all these drugs that cause horrible adverse effects, and by the way, they charge whatever they want for them. The new cholesterol drugs are 12000 bucks a year. Some of my rheumatoid arthritis patients, my MS patients, they're spending, they don't spend it, you know, the government and the insurance companies do. They're spending fifty to seventy-five dollars to $85,000 a year just on the medication. Drug companies are doing what businesses should do. Unfortunately, they're selling products that are not just useless, but they're toxic. They're dangerously toxic to the public. And the other thing that happens when you sell drugs to people is they think, especially when it comes from reputable folks like your doctors, doctor would never do anything wrong to me. Especially when coming through doctors, the, the sale of these medications to the public uh, they don't stand a chance, uh, 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 and they can charge whatever they want, and they do. So you know, you know. So, so the drug companies, uh, uh, they need uh, what they need is. I'll tell you what they need. Okay. So I, I'll tell you what they need Go is on. they regulation like the tobacco industry has, like the alcohol industries have. The food industry and the drug companies need that kind of oversight, and they need to prove beyond any doubt that the drugs far outweigh uh, benefits versus harms, and that they cost, yeah, I mean, seventy five thousand dollars a year just for the drug. Most people, I mean, really, most people don't make that amount of money in the whole year for everything. So, uh, yeah, it's criminal. Their behavior is criminal, and called criminal by experts but they're just doing business sure. don't take it personal <laughs> so do you think how far away do you think we are from tighter regulations do you think it's a matter of five years 30 years or what, what country are you talking about so i mean i th i think england your uk and the us are kind of on a par so let's go with those two We'll start with the U.S. What do you think? Uh, you I, I couldn't go with the United Kingdom. I don't know enough about their okay. system. 
Uh, I do know the United Kingdom does, for example, MS drugs up until recently. They recommended against using them up until recently. So the United Kingdom, I think, uh, the National Health Service does take uh, more uh, reasonable control of the drug companies. In the United States, when will it change? Never until, <laughs> until we get universal health care. Until we get a leadership in this country that stops the crooks. It's just like with prohibition and alcohol or uh, any regulation of tobacco. You have to have a government in charge that cares more about the, its people than it does about its businesses. In the United States, agribusiness outweighs the value of human health. That's what the USDA says in its, uh, by its activities, the United States Department of Agriculture. It says to the public, we care more about uh, ConAgra and the dairy industry and the meat industry than we do about you and your children and your spouses. That's what we, even though we represent both, we care more about thriving in agribusiness than we do about public health. But when is it going to change? Never. No, it's never going to change unless politics change uh, in the United States. And, of course, you know, we've seen some real political changes lately. So who knows? It could. Uh, somebody, some, somebody could, uh, not that there won't be some bad outcomes as a result of losing all our freedoms, but somebody may come up and say, you know, that's enough. You can't sell poison to my children. Now, that is an important point I will end on, because I know you want to move me along. Is civilized people take care of their children. If it's over 21, you can get drunk. You can use drugs, as long as you don't hurt me on the side of the road or anything. If you're over 21, but a civilized population of people takes care of their children. In the United States, in England, Australia, New Zealand, China, etc. They are uncivilized because they allow their children. And I'm talking about 30%. You know, we're going up to around half the children in places like Italy and Greece are overweight, and 20% in some countries are obese, and they have diabetes, and they're all basically all constipated. So, yeah, I want to end with the fact that uh, you ask when will countries change? When will they become civilized? Hmm. Interesting. So what would you say to our listener then who's heard what you've said and, and you said that drugs are not only ineffective, they're toxic, they're expensive, they're not doing the jobs they're supposed to do, the, the industry is unregulated, you don't see any major change happening soon. That So there is a, a I don't want to leave our listener kind of in despair thinking, what do I do? So you've mentioned diet. So is are most diseases really reversible and preventable with a starch-based diet? Well, yes. Uh, dietarily caused diseases are, can be stopped and reversed by diet and about 80% of the problems plus in, uh, quote, uncivilized countries like the United States and Australia and New Zealand, about 80 plus percent of the people suffer from dietary diseases. But I don't want you to leave your listener hanging and thinking that, that you should throw all drugs away. That is incorrect. That is not the philosophy I should give, be giving you. If you heard that, there are medications that are life saving, and you should change your medications only under a qualified doctor's supervision. You know, so don't don't throw out your, your uh, you know, insulin if you're a type 1 diabetic or so don't be silly make sure you hear what we're saying uh, so let's just say 80 percent of the diseases are caused by diet those would be obesity which 80 percent of people in your country and I'll, i'm not quite sure exactly where you're from but in your country are overweight and uh nearly 40 percent in the united states are obese so uh what percentage of the population are we talking about at least 80 percent uh, in China, half the population is pre-diabetic and 12% are diabetic. Those are the same statistics in India, in the United States, probably Australia, etc. So half the public is diabetic or pre-diabetic, more than half. 
uh, what else? Constipated. How much? Gee, I used to be a general practitioner. I can pretty much tell you that's a, a universal problem. So, uh, can all diseases be reversed with a diet? No. Can most? Yeah, because they're caused by eating the diet of kings and queens. You stop that diet, and the body does what it naturally does, which is heal. You can't stop it. If you feed it right, you give it some, some good food, some clean air, some clean water, a little sunshine, it just goes. Just goes like natural. <laughs> and, 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 and this is where a good doctor is important because you have to be reducing and stopping your medication. Remember I told you, our data, which you can look up uh, on the Internet in an official uh, peer-reviewed medical journal, our data shows in, in seven days nearly 90% of people have reduced or stopped medications for diabetes and blood pressure. So be prepared. You've got to, you've got to have somebody watching you with the medications. Incredible. Incredible. Okay, so a lot of diseases can be stopped and reversed with a starch-based diet. Isn't it boring, though, that kind of way of eating? Isn't, you mean, what I eat is boring? I didn't know that. I thought what I ate was good. In fact, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to oatmeal and blueberries that Mary's making right now after we're done. And uh, let's see, uh, the, 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 the bean soup and stew type dishes over potatoes we had uh, last night. I liked that. I thought that was good. And the pea soup that the grandkids come over along with a, a loaf of a whole wheat bread, they like. They think it's good. So I'll have to tell them their food is boring. Uh, thanks for reminding me. I'll have to go tell everybody it's boring. <laughs> Listen, we have, uh, as I say, close to 4,000 recipes published. Uh, in 11 of the 13 books we have recipes published, the app that you can buy, I think it's for both kinds of devices, nearly a thousand, over a thousand recipes for four dollars and ninety nine cents US. Uh, hey, ladies and gentlemen, if I ask you what you like to eat, and I mention things like potatoes, you say, "Oh, I love mashed potatoes," or pasta and, and uh, marinara sauce. Oh, that's comfort food. I love that. Or if you happen to be raised on rice, any rice and vegetable dish with your favorite grandma's seasonings, well, I have to let everybody know how boring that is because somehow billions of people haven't noticed. What I think is boring is to eat yellow and brown food that tastes of grease and salt. That's what I think is boring. That's called Kentucky Fried Chicken, mm. and McDonald's, and Burger King. It's grease and salt, yellow and brown food. That's boring. I agree. I agree. And it's a hot same thing. It's yellow. <laughs> they throw a few colored things in there for interest. And, of course, you leave them on the side because all you want is the cheese and the pepperoni. I used to be there. I know this. I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> okay. So anyone who's who's listened to our interview and is saying, yeah, okay, makes sense, and are either struggling with energy or health or currently have a disease or want to prevent a, a disease and want to get started on a more starch-based diet, where, where would you start? Well, of course, I've only spent 50 years and 40 directly dedicated to the place you should start, which is called drmcdougall.com. That's our website. It's uh, I would match it with General Motors and Ford Motor Company and and Upjohn, Eli Lilly Drug Company's websites. I'd match it with any website out there. Our website is amazing in terms of uh, appearance and functionality. Uh, we have a search engine there that'll bring you almost anything, and we have a quick start program, which are the three basic lectures. One that I give and two that Mary gives. Free. Everything's, everything is free on the website. And there are hundreds of thousands of people, and I don't underestimate this, that have learned our program and it co hasn't cost them a penny. In fact, it's saved them hundreds of thousands of dollars in unnecessary surgery and medications and suffering and productivity and so on. 
So it's drmcdougall.com. We have recipes there. We have menu plans. Uh, the newsletter I write every month is there free. We have Dr. McDougall's color picture book in 20, 22 languages, I think. Free. Anyway, uh, you can buy books in your bookstore. They're for sale. Uh, the newest one is The Healthy Style on the Planet. The Starch Solution has become... It's becoming a work on its own. It's uh, just spreading worldwide all, all by itself. Uh, anyway, it, it, the books have, uh, because you know, I, I was able to sell them 30 years ago when, before the industry discovered how uh, unbusinesslike it is to have people like me appear in public. Be, before that happened, I used to be able to appear in public a lot. Now my appearance in public is basically the internet, like we're doing now. And we do a webinar every Thursday morning worldwide. But uh, so anything I do has to sell by word of mouth. I can't get on Oz and promote this lectin-free, don't eat any beans or grains or any other stupid diet. You know, how to lose weight. Wear one green shoe and one red shoe, and you will lose weight. <laughs> this is the new guy on Dr. Oz. <laughs> I don't get that opportunity. So everything's by word of mouth, and uh, our work is spreading by word of mouth. So uh, I, it tells me that what we've done is really solid and a meaning of its own without Mary and I. Uh, it, uh, it's become a, a worldwide phenomenon, the starch solution in particular, and now the diet is healthy. Diet. The healthiest diet on the planet, likewise, is uh, it's, in, it's in its fourth printing uh, and going back for more. So, uh, yeah, go to drmcdougall.com. Everything you want there is free. You can buy some books. You can come to my 10-day live-in program. Come to one of our weekends where we uh, do an intensive weekend. Uh, we have been doing adventure trips all over all over the world, uh, Panama, Peru, all kinds of places. We're, we're, we may be doing more of those. And, uh, anyway, we're, uh, free is the word you want. Free, 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 because there are no gimmicks. It's drmcdougall.com. Okay, fantastic. So drmcdougall.com. Um, and I can vouch for it. I've been on your website many times, subscribed to your newsletter, and it's, yeah, fantastic stuff. I love your recipes. And so, you listen yeah. to the webinar? I haven't listened to your webinar, so this well, is every well, Thursday. Well, it's late on Thursday, 7 a.m. Pacific, but... It's also recorded, and the next day it's up under a section of our website called Webinars. Okay. So webinars are where I get a chance to kind of relax and talk for about an hour every week to people. And again, it's free. There are no gimmicks, no ads, no, you know, we, 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 unfortunately, Business 101, I, I missed that course. <laughs> <laughs> I was too busy taking courses on people. <laughs> yeah. But your approach obviously works, and like you say, word of mouth has spread immensely because, yeah, this is the diet we're designed to eat, and it's, it's effective. Once people like you and probably a lot of your friends and relatives, you know, once they see it, you know, and they don't, they don't have to do it. They just see it. They're, they're, they're never blind again. Their eyes are open. Once they do it, they never go on any other program. They say, why, why would I? I mean, this is obviously the way I'm supposed to eat. So it, it, we have a, a huge following, uh, but it's been a, a, a long time gained following. It's, it's been 40 years it's taken Mary and I to gain this following. So it's, um, you know, it, it, it doesn't have the easiest learning curve, but once you get it, you go, you know, you, you're like you. You can hardly wait to tell the next person. Mm, mm. Isn't that the way you feel? Absolutely, yeah. You, you know, you can, wait a minute. I want to tell you something that I discovered five years ago. And, you know, and you see all these people around you suffering, uh, you know, overweight. Uh, you know, men look like they're, they're eight months pregnant. Uh, you see all this suffering, these poor little children, and you know you go to the shopping center. And you just want to go up and, and you know, stop them and say, "Look, the problem is this. It's really easy to fix." Uh, you need to do that, by the way. You need to, Mary keeps me from doing it, but if, she, if she wasn't there to hold me back, I'd be doing it more often. <laughs> 
Well, yeah, your work is fantastic, John. So thank you so much. It's been wonderful to have you on the show. Before we leave, is there anything that um, I haven't asked you that that you want to share with our listener? No, it's just that I I think what you tried to do uh, with this interview and what I've been trying to do is... uh, not, not force you to do something, just ask you to open your eyes. I mean, you, you I, I mentioned religion, you mentioned Bible. All right, that's your thing. You know, you're, you're, you're a Christian, there are a lot of them out there. Well, you ought to, you ought to be believing in what you, you, you say you believe in. Uh, you know, just open your eyes and, and see what, what uh, history is and uh, see what different geographic locations still are. They're changing fast. You know, just look. It, it's 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 not a complex problem. It's a simple problem. It's a a problem of food poisoning. It's food. Mm-hmm. Goodbye. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. So the answer is a starch-based diet, which is simple, affordable, delicious. John said he's got over 4,000 recipes on his website in my books I've got lots of recipes and and as you say it's comfort foods who doesn't like eating pasta pizza and I'm of the strong view that anything that that we naturally like that's unhealthy we can make it healthy by making it at home leaving out all the chemicals and the refined fats and oils and and the meats and the dairy Um, but yeah uh, that's my thing making these unhealthy foods more starch based and and healthy and it it works i've experienced the benefits you have and i mean how many of your patients around the world have have benefited from your approach john roughly numbers wise uh, those that have uh, taken it seriously and followed it yeah somewhere close to 100 percent. okay and in numbers like hard it's numbers it's like you asking me how many of my patients that quit smoking got benefits let's see how many got benefits how many of my alcoholics got benefits from drinking? Let me see. Let me count them. <laughs> and by the way, you're getting me into a whole other subject. We will have another hour, which is how you make poisonous food palatable. Okay. Okay. Do it with salt and sugar. Otherwise, it's in, unpalatable. We'll leave it at that. Okay. Maybe maybe we could have you on another time to discuss that maybe. But um, yeah, all well, right, John. I appreciate your time and well, share with your friends. Thank you. Yes. Appreciate you coming on. And um, so drmcdougal.com. Um, yeah. Loads of resources and a, a wonderful website. So thanks so much, John. Really appreciate your time and the work you do. So that was Dr. John McDougall. Um, Interesting chap. Hey, been in this game a long time, knows what he's talking about. What can we take from this interview today then? Degenerative disease can be prevented and reversed with a healthier diet. So in particular, or specifically, a high starch vegan diet. So high carbohydrate, complex carbohydrate. So he mentioned rice, potato, corn that type of stuff needs to be the bulk of our diet and that's the diet which is going to prevent and reverse disease. So we need to stop eating the diet of kings and queens as he mentioned which is high fat rich foods the type of foods that are going to give us gout clog our arteries so we need to ditch the the fast foods the foods dripped in oil the highly processed foods and go for a much simpler um, which is also more affordable way of eating. I'm going to leave you with a verse from scripture, which Dr. John McDougall alluded to. So he talked about Daniel in the Bible eating a fruit and vegetable and starch based diet. And he does. So let's just read a a, a couple of scriptures from Daniel chapter one. And this is where Daniel is in the king's parlor, invited to a big feast. And chapter 1 verse 8 says, But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine, and he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. And then let's go down to chapter 1 verse 12. We'll do 12 to 15. Please test your servants for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed to this and tested them for 10 days. At the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. So there could be a lesson there. 
you know, fruits and vegetables, starch-based diet is, um, well, as Dr. McDougall has shown from his 50 years of practice, can lead to better health than eating very decadent food. So that's the takeaway from today's episode. So thanks again for listening and I look forward to catching you on episode four of Eternal Health. Thanks for listening to the Eternal Health Podcast. Go to lauraremmer.com to download your free Optimum Health Scorecard and find out your current health score, plus tips, coaching, and training on how to get slim, healed, and energized. Remember to subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, and we'll catch you next time on Eternal Health.